Hello, everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to talk about Hurricane Barrel. First, if we look at the most recent inferred satellite photos, we can see that a tropical wave is already moving across the Windward Islands, moistening the atmosphere and preparing the way for Tropical Storm Barrel. They're undoubtedly seeing powerful thunderstorms over a portion of Venezuela, Trinidad, and Tobago, connected to a tropical wave. Granada, and later on, we witness another tropical wave approaching with barrel. Considering that it is only June, there is undoubtedly a lot of activity going on. As a result, we can see upper-level clouds spreading out across barrel, which suggests that the system is attempting to intensify deep convection close to its center in an effort to form an eye with that centrally concentrated overcast. All of this is undoubtedly moving west and northwest, potentially affecting areas of Barbados, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, and possibly even Martinique. If we look closely at Barrel, we can clearly see the high, chilly cloud tops, which are represented by the yellows, reds, blacks, and even some purples. This indicates that there is a significant amount of convection going on. There aren't many lightning strikes right now as we could see earlier, but that could change later. If we look at the many tracks from the many computer models available, we can see that most of them take it on a west-northwesterly track, so it will undoubtedly hit parts of the Windward Islands before entering the Central and Western Caribbean and passing very close to Jamaica. In addition, it is predicted to intensify into a major hurricane even before it reaches the Eastern Caribbean Islands. As we can see, many of the models here are bringing the winds up to Category 3, which is actually quite strong and capable of causing damage by destroying roofs. In addition, the storm surge from the sea coming inland can destroy nearby houses or buildings. We also know that salt water is definitely bad for some infrastructure, including vehicles, if we look at the forecast maps, so we're only going to be looking at the six zone this morning. This time, we'll be concentrating on the southern regions of the map once more, and we'll be examining the 6 C run to determine the expected path of the system. We'll just be examining the next 168 hours in relation to this system. So we can see it here entering the Euro model as of the 60 run, which should arrive by Monday. It's currently 15 on Monday, which is actually 10 a.m., and we're actually expanding further to see the Euro actually stopping it at 90 hours, just to the south of Hispaniola. What does the GFS forecast for the next 90 hours indicate? Something along these lines will undoubtedly pass through the Windward Island and then, by our 90-hour forecast, will stop it precisely to the south of Hispaniola. This is in line with the consensus that both the Eura and the GFS are indicating on their 6C runs, and it is unquestionably the case. In fact, if we even look at the expected rainfall forecast, we can see the lines associated with these systems, and the purples represent up to 2 inches of rainfall or more. Tropical depression, more precisely, barrel, and we even witness rainfall of up to 7, or perhaps up to 12 inches. It should be noted that both of these depict the following 7 days in Euro with the majority of the precipitation moving southward across Jamaica. The Hurricane Center has threaded the needle with the system pushing it more to Jamaica because they are unsure if it will be heading north, closer to Hispaniola, northern Jamaica, or south. GFS has most of it coming maybe to the north of Jamaica. This is just as of the 6C and the Z run combined. To be traveling through the waters to the south of the island of Jamaica. In any case, we can see the predicted amount of rainfall, and it's even better here on the Weather Nerds map, where all of the purples and even some whites represent up to 3 inches to 6 or 7 inches of rain. It's absurd that we can see the outline of the rain that this system is expected to produce as the days go by. In any case, we currently have a tropical storm. Barrel, the tropical storm that was carrying such tremendous winds this morning at 50 miles per hour has now increased to 65 miles per hour. A tropical storm is about to turn into a hurricane. We can see that it is still moving westward at a speed of 23 miles per hour, which is essentially moving along the 10 degrees north line. As a result, we can conclude that the hurricane status is only around 74 miles per hour, and it may even strengthen into a hurricane by 5 p.m., if not by 11 p.m., this afternoon. Update. As of tonight, we are aware that we are discussing either Eastern Standard Time or Atlantic Standard Time. Jamaican time is one hour ahead of ours. So when it is 5 p.m. there, it is actually 4 p.m. Here, we just need to keep an eye on things to see exactly what's going on. Perhaps Hurricane Barrel is headed our way this afternoon, and we can also see that it's reaching major hurricane status, as indicated by the key on the bottom right, 
which denotes systems with insane maximum sustained winds of 110 miles per hour. You may observe the damage that genuinely occurs with these systems based on the wind speeds of hurricanes and what typically happens from Category 1 to Categories 3 to 5. As it approaches Jamaica, it rises to major hurricane status before weakening to a H or possibly a Category 2 storm. As you can see, forecasters are unsure of Warrior's exact path, but it is certain to approach the island, and if it moves north of us, it may have an impact on us. We simply need to be ready if it moves to our south. As you can see, the likelihood of wind speed increasing across the island is increasing, and the orange areas indicate up to 50% more of the island that could be impacted by this system in addition to the rainfall. Hurricanes are bad, bad, bad things. They actually expanded it yesterday, moving it closer to Jamaica and Hispaniola. As a result, we now know that the yellows indicate anywhere from 46 inches to 10 or 100 to 150 millimeters of rainfall. Thus, we simply need to take these forecasts with a grain of salt. These are only the early stages and they haven't reached Jamaica yet. We'll have to wait and see if it truly maintains its major hurricane status or not. In any case, heavy rainfall, flooding, and possibly even mudslides and landslides are all anticipated, not to mention the potential damage from the anticipated winds. That concludes the tropical storm forecast. Power outages, roofs falling off houses, damage to windows and doors, well, we only need to appear in any case.